this industry for a long time. I've trained, learned from, and taught the best. And all through the sweat, pain, blood, I've created the hardest leg workout you will ever do. I'm Chris Gethin. Bring your balls, harden the f up, and let's go. This leg workout came from uh, years of training. Like I've been training for 14 years now, so I have to keep on thinking outside of the box to make sure that each body part evolves and legs being a hard body part to continue to evolve. Um, I've had to kind of extract pieces from myself and people that I've trained with, such as Dorian Yates, Branch Warren, uh, Gary Strider, Neil Hill, uh, Flex Lewis, and uh, try to you know attach each part into my own sort of method. And every now and again, like every eight weeks ago, I'll do a workout such as this. It's high volume, but it is an endurance workout. You know, we, we only train for like 45 minutes, so uh, you know I just throw that in there and just shock the system every now and again, and it works. It's the world's toughest workout for me, for sure, and for anybody else who tries to push themselves beyond the realms of what seems uh, natural. This is unnatural, what we're doing in the gym. And, you know, it isn't an endurance workout by any means, but what makes it really, really hard is the intensity of it. Like, we're only taking like 45 seconds rest in between the sets. So you're gonna be sucking a lot of oxygen, especially if you've got more muscle, which requires more oxygen. Man, you're gonna be dragging ass in there. And we're leaving no stone unturned. We're hitting our type one muscle fibers, our type two A's, type two B's. We're really knocking the central nervous system out of whack. And uh, you know, it's gonna knock your head about, it's gonna knock your body about. And if it seems easy, you just ain't pushing it hard enough with the intensity or the weight. We're gonna be using uh, various uh, techniques during this workout. We've got our straight sets. We're gonna have drop sets thrown in there. We're gonna have partial reps thrown in there. We're also gonna have super sets uh, thrown in there as well. So, you know, we're, we're gonna be hitting the muscles from all types of angles just to make sure that we're shocking the system and we're not allowing the muscles, specifically the legs, now get adapted to its environment. We're gonna start off with leg extensions. We're gonna get nasty, grimy, and dirty in this. We're gonna get work up to 100 reps. You may think it's gonna be a lightweight, but it's not. It's gonna be a very heavy weight. We're gonna be doing a drop set in order to get to 100 reps. But before we do that, we're just gonna do a couple of warm-up sets just to make sure that we get the synovial fluid in our knees and the blood within our muscles and to psych our head up. All right, and in between your sets, just stretch out the quads quickly. Hold each stretch for about 10 seconds, because it takes about 10 seconds at least for the muscle to stretch out. And then we're gonna increase the weight a little bit and just do another warm up of around 10 to 15 repetitions. Again, just activate the muscles, get them firing and get the brain activated. So for this workout, we're gonna start off with uh, 100 reps on leg extensions. Now this is gonna be a drop set. What you should be doing is starting off with the heaviest weight that you can possibly push on leg extensions after you've done a couple of warm-up sets, obviously. I'm gonna put the stack on there and probably try to go for about 20 or 30 repetitions before dropping it down. And every time I drop it, I wanna get out at least 10 reps. So I may do 20 or 30 now, I'll drop it, grind out another 10, drop it, grind out another 10, and keep following that theme and pattern until I get to 100 repetitions. Once I get to that 100 repetitions, I'm gonna put it down on the stack again and just knock out some partials. I'm gonna be aiming for anywhere between 15 to 20 reps before dropping it, 15 to 20 reps, and dropping it again, 15 to 20 reps. So I'll do that uh, three times then, straight at the end of this 100 rep drop set. So I've done 100 reps now. I'm gonna put the weight all the way back to the bottom of the stack. For 
of my partials. Make sure that you lean forward on this now, don't lean back. <laughs> to choose a weight uh, for your partials, for instance, it's gonna be trial and error. Like, I don't know how fast you fatigue, how much lactic acid that you have, how many type one muscle fibers you have over type two. So you'll have to trial and error. If you're doing a lot less than 10 reps before reaching failure, then you need to lighten it a little bit next time. Again, if you're doing more than 20 reps, then you need to make it a little bit heavier. So just uh, trial and error. Make sure that you chart down what weight that you used until you find the, the right weight where you're reaching failure around 50 to 20 on those, uh, on those partials. Okay, so we did 20, 40, 60 repetitions there on the partials. As you can see, it was only like a two to three inch movement. Uh, very little movement. Uh, what you'll find is that it really targets the quads right here, right around the knee, right on the rectus femoris there. If I lean back on the seat, I'll find that it works a little bit too much of the flexors. So to really isolate the quads right around the knee, right there, we lean forward when we're doing the partials. The muscles are just absolutely gorged with blood now. So to target the quads even more now, we're gonna superset leg press with sissy squats. To start off with the leg press, we're gonna start off with our feet at the bottom of the platform with heels about fist distance apart, toes slightly pointed out, and we're gonna start off with 14 repetitions, and then you're gonna rest for five seconds without racking a weight, and then you're gonna do 12 repetitions. Again, rest for five seconds, and then do 10 repetitions, and then we're gonna continue that theme with eight, six, four, two, and then that set is done. Uh, you superset onto the city squats then. Some people, you know, I've trained with, uh, they'll do with the 100 reps on the leg extensions and the partial reps, and that's their workout done. You know, they're on their way to the restroom and they're throwing up. But, you know, you've got to be conditioned to this. I do a lot of cardio, remember, so, you know, uh, my cardiovascular endurance is pretty good, so I can hit the high reps. Um, someone like Branch Warren, would you believe, has got pretty good cardiovascular endurance as well. He trains you know, very intense, and he's a big guy. So if he can do it, a lot of other people can. You just have to be conditioned to it. So it takes a lot of experience, but it takes a lot of mental focus as well. Okay, again, straight into the sissy squats now. Always unstrap my knees now because I don't feel too much stress within the knees on sissy squats and I want to get the blood flow back around my quads and my knee area. We're gonna start off with 20 repetitions, holding the dumbbells, going down to just a little bit further than uh, parallel, so your hamstring should be just a little bit further than parallel. And once you've reached failure with that, you're gonna drop them, go a little bit lighter, and do another 20 repetitions. Now you may reach failure before the 20 repetitions, but that's fine. You just rest pause until you get to the 20. Again, when you feel like there's nothing left in the tank, you're dropping the weight and you're going at it again, you know? and it's a great sense of achievement, but it's a great sense of just, just being the bully in the gym, you know? You're just pounding yourself, pounding yourself, pounding yourself until you ain't got nothing left, until you get back up next time and do it all over again. <sighs> Shit, that was tough. All right, so. Once we superset it onto the CC squats, as you can see, I was using a dumbbell as my counterbalance to lean back, keep my back a little bit more upright. So I haven't, I'm not leaning too far forward. So I'm still getting a lot of pressure through the quads, not much pressure on my back. And uh, I only come up three quarters of the way because I want to keep constant tension on the legs at all time, nothing on the joints, all on the muscles. You cannot stop until you've reached 
your acquired amount of repetitions, which is 20 repetitions. In this case, it's do or die. You've got to do it, you've got to accomplish it. You have to achieve something every time you go to the gym. If that's a goal that you set, you make sure you're damn ass that you're going to achieve it. Okay, even though I'm out of breath, it's time for set two, where we're going to bring the legs up a little bit, a little bit wider. Same with the sissy squats. We're going to take a slightly wider stance now to hit the abductors, which is the inner part of the thigh. Uh, so legs should be near the top of the plate now, closer to shoulder distance apart, and about shoulder distance apart on a sissy squat. Let's hit it. I don't like to rack the weight on the leg press uh, in between my, my five second intervals between the 14 reps and the 12 reps or whatever because I want to keep the mental focus in that set the whole time. If I rack it, I feel like that set is over with. I want to keep the stress and load on the muscles. I don't want to relax and go at it again because I feel that it's going to take too much mental energy just to get back into it again. So I prefer to keep that tension there, keep the intensity in there because this workout is all about intensity and that's it for me, you know. So I like to just keep it unracked and just, uh, just keep knocking it out, knocking it out. <laughs> Okay, on strap again. There's no pressure on the sissy squats on the knees, so I need to get the blood back into the area. That's essential before we do these sets. Take a few deep breaths in through your nose, get the oxygen to your brain, clear the head of any outside distraction and get your head into the set. Because not just quantity we're looking for, it's absolute quality. When I come into the gym, I ain't thinking about nothing else but that, this workout. And I've been thinking about it for maybe 24 hours before. I'm picturing myself going through the motions, you know, and you've got to, you know, psych yourself up and put yourself into that dark place as well. You know, if you want it bad enough, you will accomplish it. A lot of the time I should sleep more than what I should, but sometimes I feel good if I'm slightly sleep deprived because I'm a little bit more pissed off and I'm a little bit more psyched up to get through workouts like this and so uh, reason being that's why I do it. That second set absolutely mullered me but it's good. I felt no strain on my back, on my knees, just my cardiovascular system, and we're supposed to work right through the quads. So um, I've experienced a lot of back problems with conventional squats. I used to go extremely heavy, and uh, Neil Hill actually taught me this movement, which really blitz my quads just as much without the stress and load on my back. Of course, I still squat, and I do recommend squats. Uh, just I don't make make it a common part of the workouts on a weekly basis. Okay, so we're done with that super set now. We just did two sets. That's all we required from that. Um, we're going straight on to the next exercise. Now, we're gonna do what's called hill squats with one leg, super set that with a variation of the lying hamstring curl, which I'll demonstrate for you. Once we've done one leg on the quad and hamstrings, in a superset fashion, we'll do the other leg in a superset fashion and we'll cross back and forth for three sets in total. All right, let's get into it. So the next exercise is a superset with hill squats with a variation of a lying hamstring curl, single-legged on each one. Now the hill squat is something that I learned from Neil Hill, hence uh, hill squat. So what we're going to do is with our single leg of the hill squat, we're going to do 20 repetitions holding a plate. Once we've reached failure at 20 repetitions on that same leg, we're going to superset on the lying hamstring curl, that variation that I, that I demonstrate. Once we've finished 15 repetitions, 
times on there, we go straight back to the hill squat on the opposite leg of 20 repetitions and then superset that with a variation of the lying hamstring curl for 15. And then we go back again onto our beginning leg of the hill squat, 20 repetitions, superset it back onto the hamstring curl for 15 and we just keep going back and forth until we've done three sets in total of each superset on each leg. So there's no rest here, you know, it's going to hurt, it's going to be hard, you're going to be lightheaded, you're going to feel sick, but you know, this isn't a sissy workout, you know, I'm sick of seeing people with big built upper bodies and skinny legs. If you want to get big legs with cuts, with separation, you're going to have to get with the big boys, so let's get straight into it. So remember, when you're doing this, the hill squat, we're doing 20 reps on here and we're doing 15 reps on the hamstring curl. When we're doing the hill squat here, we're only going down all the, all the way, but only going up three quarters away. There's three, we're going to 20. So when you're doing a hill squat, your legs should be supported on a box or something that's about knee height. Any lower than that, you're not going to get the full range of motion. Any higher than that, uh, you're not going to be able to go down as far as, as you may, or you might find that you're going to have too much stress and load on your supporting legs. So finding a bench or a box of uh, knee height is, is about adequate. Bring that supported leg up right high so we can isolate the leg as much as possible. Keep your arms locked, stay upright. You won't be able to use much weight on this. It's five. We're going to 15. On the hamstring curls, you'll notice that my range of motion wasn't fully extending uh, the knee, so the leg was never straight, because I want to keep the tension on the hamstring at all times and not on the tendons or the joints. There's always tension on the belly of the muscle at all times, you know. Keeping that stress and load on there will allow you to reach failure faster as opposed to using a full range of motion, and it's gonna, you're going to have less chance of injury as well. I really enjoy workouts like this. I thrive off the pain, you know, because pain is pleasure at the end of the day. And not only that, you know, I get motivated by people telling me what I can't do and what isn't correct. Specifically guys on the forums that are haters and they say, you can't do this. Meal frequency doesn't mean shit. And, you know, high reps, you ain't gonna build muscle like that. Well, instead of having their noses in the book, maybe that it should be bleeding right here in the gym because half the time I look at these cats and they're like fat pieces of amoebas or, or you've got like skinny rakes telling me what to do, you know? Just check out the results that I'm able to attain or the ones of my clients and then talk to me, you know, because otherwise you ain't standing next to me. If you can't stand next to me, go talk to someone else and waste your breath, you know, because I'm here to evolve and move forward. Yeah. All right, that's our three supersets done with hill squats and hamstring curl. Again, no rest in between those sets, all three single sets at all. It's just back and forth, back and forth. You will be blowing air. You'll be trying to suck in oxygen. It's gonna to be tough, but you know, you've got to fail to succeed. You leave everything here in the gym. You don't take anything with you out the door. And then you do it all again next week, but tougher and harder. As I said, if you want unnatural results, you're gonna to have to do unnatural things in the gym. So guess what? We're gonna go straight back to our first exercise on leg extension. We're gonna do the same as what we did when we started this workout. My hamstrings and glutes are really fried from this exercise. I wanna fry the quads again. So we're, again, we're gonna start with the first exercise, repeating it exactly the same, 100 rep drop set, followed by the triple drop of the partials. No rest, let's do it. So our final exercise is repeating our first exercise, leg extensions, a 100 rep drop set, identical to the way we did it before. Uh, so start off with the heaviest weight of around 20 to 30 repetitions I did, but you've got to do a minimum of 10. And then once you've finished your 100 reps, going through the uh, drop sets, we repeat the partials again. When you feel like there is nothing left but to drag your ass out by your lips, 
hitting those partials just totally you know wipe the floor with you because you're not only just hitting some partials you're going back to the weight stack that you started with you know at, at your heaviest weight when your legs are totally fatigued so you're just draining that last bit out it, you know just think about getting your ass knocked out in the ring for instance and then someone dragging you by your face out of the ring that's what it feels like and you know doing something to shock the system will always shock the body <sighs> so that's it bro our hamstrings, quads, and glutes. So I did a, a drop set then until I reached 100 reps. It doesn't matter if you do three drop sets, five drop sets, as long as you get to your 100, reaching failure with every drop set, starting with the heaviest weight possible, just to totally fry whatever is left in the quads. It is now dead. Remember, when you come into the gym, it's your chance to be the bully. You can kick the shit out of yourself, you know? And it's legal. <laughs> So you just keep on at it, keep punching it, punching it. If you feel there's some life left in you, punch it some more. So let me ask you, are you gonna come up with an excuse or a commitment? You have to do what you fear and not fear what you do. If you fear something like this, do it because that's the only way that you're gonna progress. But if you've got any more questions for me, hit me up on Body Space. My name is Caged Muscle. And for more of my training programs, you can check out the 12-week hardcore video trainer or my four-week DTP trainer. And for more content like this, go on to bodybuilding.com.